You are tuned to the Human Frequency on American Freedom Radio, broadcasting from the forgotten forests of Ponderosa Pines in beautiful Southern California. We had some fascinating sky cleaning experiences this week. You can check them out on my blog, which is the <clears throat> R blog, Thank you. the Kembo dot tumblr dot com and despite the doomsayers in both the mainstream and independent media california is lush and green this spring the wildlife up here in the mountains is blooming and burgeoning and flourishing and the oregon energy is stronger than ever this is your host sharon and i'm here with my better half gabriel in day four of our distilled water experience oh yeah and you know the more of that stuff that you flush out of your body the more you really start to see how the agenda to fill people with metals and then bombard them with deadly frequencies it just becomes all that more obvious well i can't believe it took this long to start drinking distilled water we tried every <laughs> kind of filter and you know we can't put reverse osmosis in because one we can't afford it and two we're renters uh, so we finally finally got the distiller and i slept better i felt better i felt cleaner and most of all the craziest thing was i've had this ringing in my right ear for the past year ever since moving from a non-smart meter me neighborhood to a smart meter neighborhood i've had this ringing in my right ear and it's, it would sound like two tones back and forth back and forth and at irregular intervals it's been driving me up the wall and i don't know if this is related to the distilled water but for the past couple of days the ringing has reduced itself to one tone which is a lot easier to live with than the fax machine sound I've been listening to. <laughs> How about you, Gabe? I've noticed just an overall just decrease in, in the feeling like I'm going insane, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Being from Los Angeles, I can't believe it took me this long. Los Angeles started fluoridating the water in 96. So I had my childhood informative years to drink non-fluoridated water, but with all the chlorine, mercury, aluminum, lead, and all the other stuff, it took me this long to figure this out. And now I live in the mountains with some kind of well water, which is full of minerals. It tastes terrible. So we finally <laughs> <laughs> started distilling the water. Well, they're inorganic. And that's, that's the main thing about water distillation is that you can only uptake the organic elements and the inorganic ones, just your body expends all this energy just trying to flush it out of you and get it out. Of you, right. So. Well, we couldn't even use our distiller on day one because of the power outage. They had an all day power outage planned by Southern California Edison in order to install more surveillance and smart technology in the neighborhood. So we've, you know, we're dealing with a smart meter neighborhood here. And uh, well, we have a great guest today. That's so. right. Speaking of electricity, we are very excited to introduce today's guest, Lloyd Burrell of electricsense.com which is a website that covers the topics of EMF, dirty electricity, and other topics of a similar ilk. His journey began after becoming sick of the cell phone industry's lies about the safety of cell phones, and after becoming ill from the resulting radiation himself. Electromagnetic fields and their impact on our health and environment is the most underreported issue of our generation. Lloyd is helping people everywhere who suffer from electrical sensitivity, providing both in-depth information as well as ways to protect ourselves in an increasingly EMF-saturated world. Lloyd, welcome to The Human Frequency, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Gabe. Pleasure to be here. We're so excited because this is an issue that's very important to Gabe and myself and something we didn't know about until the last couple of years. And we've made a lot of changes in our lives. And I'd like to first start off with your story. How did you get started? And how did you learn that you were electrically sensitive? Yeah, that, that's, um, that's an excellent place to start. Um, well, I what happened to me was um, one day in 2002, I was living my life. Um, and my cell phone, I was running my business and things were going rather well I thought and I was working outside um, and I was running a, a rental business at the time and um, I'd had a cell phone for four years um, since 1998 and I wasn't a big big user but the uh, it was the, the, the cell phone was great because it got me out of the office um, and so that's why I started using one seemed a very good idea at the time little did I know 
And uh, so this day in February 2002, what happened was um, the cell phone rang and I, said, I was working outside uh, doing some pipe work and I scrambled out, put the cell phone to my ear and I began to feel a strange sensation. And I finished the call and I was distinctly perturbed disoriented and nearly to the point of seeing stars that kind of thing and wow. so i put my cell phone back in my pocket and because it was february and people um, were ringing to book for the summer or to make inquiries uh, for, for to, to rent accommodation and so a few minutes later the cell phone rang again and i took it out of my pocket and this time, this I started to feel this pain, this this heat um, right against my ear, against the side of my head, where I was holding this cell phone. And literally by the end of the conversation, it was it was it was painful. And by the end of a few conversations, it was pretty unbearable. It was like a, an electric drill boring into the side of my head wow that's very and extreme but yeah it was pretty it was one day to the next one moment to the next literally this happened and um so being a guy and not being because i know i think this is more of a guy thing than a gal thing uh i'm not really a fan of going to see the doctor and um plus the fact the doctor is actually uh, a friend of mine um, yeah, but despite that, not not a big doctor person. So I'm I've always been a very healthy person. Really, I had lots of little accidents uh, when I was a, a kid, but um, really, practically never had a day off work, and always sort of um, you know I just kind of um, I'm quite a driven person. And oh, it'll be fine. And you know I'll I'll just uh, you know I'll get over this. It'll blow over kind of thing. And this wasn't blown over. It was it was getting worse and worse. And um, what was happening was I really couldn't use a cell phone anymore, which was um, a little bit of a handicap. So I went to see the doctor and he gave me uh, the once over product poked and he couldn't find anything wrong with me. And he looked me in the eye and he said, look, Lloyd, he said, you're stressed. <laughs> so I said, Philippe. I live in France, <laughs> Philippe. <laughs> I'm not stressed. I know what stress is because I'm before uh, I lived here in this beautiful place, which is um, very laid back. Uh, before that, I used to live in London, and in London, I used to be a chartered accountant, which is like a CPA. And it was at that time in my life, it was very stressful. It was uh, deadlines, company uh, year ends, um, overtime. Um, working plus studying to get through my uh, CPA exams and that working in a big city and all the traveling and all, you know, the tube and everything else. And that was stressful. And that is here stressful. the doctor was, yeah, that was pretty sad. <laughs> and here the, the doctor was saying you're stressed, but I sort of, I'm a very open-minded person also. And I wanted to believe him and I knew he was coming from a good place. So he said to me, look, take a week off. You'll be fine. So I took his <laughs> advice. And I took a week off and we went away and uh, with the kids and my wife, uh, I was fine. And the Monday morning, went back to work. The phone rang at like 10 past nine, whatever it was. And boom, it started again. And there it was, a slippery, slidey uh, slope into this disease, which developed over time. So initially, uh, a problem with the sensitivity to my cell phone. And then it was my computer and then it was the tv and then it was just going out and about in the car with the and then it was you know with the radio on and it got to a point where i couldn't even use a landline it was like where do i go from here it was i was uh, i'm not made to live in this century um and i was <laughs> literally um asking a lot of questions and really, the question going around in my mind was because the doctor was sending me left, right and center to see different uh, specialists, um, 
uh, neurologists and, and, and scans and different tests and, and ear, nose and throat specialists and all these different people. And really, um, I was coming to the conclusion that I was going crazy. Literally. That's the problem is that people think that and, and they don't know. And the doctors say, I can't find anything. It sounds like you just needed an extensive regimen of pharmaceutical drugs yeah. to pull you out yeah. of your funk. Okay? <laughs> well, we went that route. And again, because, you know, you go to your doctor and you trust him and he's got um, all his training and his big red book. And he looked through there because in France, it's a big red book with all these pharmaceuticals in it. And he gave me this pharmaceutical to take, and I started that, and it, it, it seemed to ease the pain. Um, because all I wanted to do was obviously just get back to using my cell phone <laughs> and carrying on, right. Uh, right. which was, I learned the hard way, wasn't the right thing to do. And uh, obviously the drugs, that uh, kind of uh, dulled the effect. But uh, over time, I had to increase the dosage. And I became like a walking zombie. It was like, you know, I didn't. I got up in the morning. I was already the the symptoms were pretty extreme. It was, it was the immediate symptoms, this massive uh, fatigue. Uh, there was the the the, the hot head, uh, this dizziness, um, and this this searing pain. You know, if I was uh, to get near the the, the, the cell phone, um, and then there was sort of the, the longer term symptoms. But yeah, that was that was the thing, really, uh, this um, feeling very alone and misunderstood and um, honestly began to doubt um, what was what, you know, what I was feeling and um, didn't really know what to do, didn't know what to do at all. And all that went on for, for two years of um, really kind of hitting rock bottom and trying to all the time I was living in denial and I was kind of pretending that everything was okay when everything wasn't okay it was just getting worse and worse and I'm not one to complain so people saying how are you doing oh fine fine but really and then obviously if somebody says well you're not looking so good or well yeah then we talk about it maybe have a conversation but um yeah so I was kind of pretending I was fine and I wasn't I was just getting worse and worse and worse and this really came to a head Two, uh, two years later, uh, in around 2004, when one day I was reading my, because I'm one of these people who still reads the newspaper even today, <laughs> for obvious reasons, um, I read an article in what was then the Daily Telegraph, which is a fairly highbrow publication, um, a UK newspaper, and it was about a guy who was CEO of a big company on the UK Stock Exchange, and this guy could not get to sleep with the electricity on, he couldn't use a computer, he couldn't use a cell phone, couldn't use a telephone, did everything by his secretary and drove a, a very old Volvo. And that, and I, and I, looked, I read the article, nice. I said, that is me, that is what I've <laughs> yes. got. The name on it, and it was called electrical sensitivity. And that really was the, the turning point for me. So then you knew you weren't alone. I actually knew somebody whose sister killed herself because she was going crazy from electrical sensitivity. And even after her death, he said she was allergic to earth is what he said. And she just couldn't live on this planet. And it's so wrong to think that way because it, these frequencies are not actually natural to earth. It's from what you're telling me that people feel so alone. I even feel alone and my sensitivity is nothing compared to yours. And sometimes I feel alone because I talk about it and people think that I'm crazy. If this right. sensitivity, it sounds to me like I've experienced something similar to you on a much milder level, which is that it begins over time and gets worse and worse. And I, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you can speak more about how does that happen? Is it just the increase of EMF in our world, the increase of cell towers and smart meters, uh, or is, is it just your personal exposure to it that is just making it worse um, every day? How does that happen? Yeah, sure. Well, um, really... All I can give you is the theory that I have on this, because, of course, there is no there's no facts about this really to speak of, because um, there's very little research done on this already. There's relatively little research done on the question of EMS and health. And then if you look at more this and I use the term electrical sensitivity in inverted commas because I don't want 
to say that it's a disease. It's just handy to talk about it in that way because I don't see it as a disease at all. I don't see. I never. Uh, fortunately, I, I, I'm not symptomatic anymore. I don't have these symptoms anymore, and, and that's been a very long process. But I do not see it as a disease. Mm -hmm. um, I see it as actually, uh, actually I'm a very healthy person, and uh, it's actually a normal reaction. And it's just that um, I'm a very sensitive person. That's what I came to realize. And that is the and, and that is actually a rather wonderful thing, except um, it's a rather difficult thing to it can be a rather difficult thing to live with. And it takes a certain amount of work and a certain um, uh, adjustment um, in your life um, uh, 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 process of change, uh, shall we say. And for me, it was a, a, a spiritual path um, uh, leading towards, uh, you know, really that 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 took me out of that place where I didn't want to be and got me um, to where I am uh, today. I don't know if that quite answered your question. I think I went off at a tangent there. No, that's, that's uh, so that's good okay. that you said that. That's great that you said that because yeah. so many people that we talk with on different issues where they find solutions mention the spiritual nature of it. So I'm so happy you said that. It would seem to me that the people who are not electrically sensitive are the ones who are abnormal. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I know people that, well, you know, I'm not going to mention yeah. names, but who, who think that I'm completely nuts. And when I talk about it, just whip out the iPhone and just immerse themselves in it to avoid right. hearing me talking about L literally, it. Literally, <laughs> that, is, that is the exact right. reaction. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, to, to get back to your question, if I may, because I, I think the question really what you were asking me what is what causes this? And so what causes this? Um, I believe the best explanation I have for this is what the, the, way, the way I explain it is the I call it the, the toxic barrel. And um, and I didn't invent this. It's just what I've um, seen to be the best best explanation from talking to many uh, experts about this, many um, doctors and scientists and uh, people uh, over, the, over the years, um, medical doctors also. And really, it's the, the what I call the toxic barrel. So that's to say, when, when I say barrel, so it's like, because I know my accent maybe might, like, might be a little bit difficult for people that are listening and not used to listening to this uh, British accent, but I'm talking about like a wine barrel or a beer barrel, and that's what I mean. So I call it the toxic barrel. So what that means very simply is when you're born, you're born and your toxic barrel is empty. And then you go through life and maybe, you know, you don't get breastfed when you're a baby. And maybe you're given those uh, vaccines uh, with all those uh, different um, heavy metals and so on in them. And uh, then you start eating the food like everybody eats. And the water you were talking about, the water, this water, this contaminated water, <laughs> yeah. uh, which poison. everybody is heavily, now drinking. Heavily contaminated. And yeah. And, the, and so this food, which has got, you know, which is uh, genetically modified, perhaps, which has got these fertilizers in it, which is... Um, and you put in these um, these creams and, and soaps and, 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 and shampoos in, on your on, in your hair and so on and so forth and, and, and the ozone layer and the uh, pollution in the air and obviously EMFs and all this. What happens is you're fine, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. And then one day and this day for me was 2002, February, precisely. You're not fine. And that is when you're in kind of overload and, it, and you, the barrel starts flowing over. And then the job is to um, is to get down that toxic level in the barrel um, really um, as, low, as low as possible. And the problem is, is once it starts flowing over, it's really difficult to reverse the, the process. And so it's not just EMFs. And that's something that I took me... Uh, I don't know, maybe four years to realize that, uh, because really I was, I felt anyway, totally on my own with this, because this was 2002. So this was like, internet is not what it is today. So you go on the internet now and there is information on this and you can see there's some bona fide resources on this. But at the time it was what I would call, sent to me anyway, like wackos talking about this, all kinds of yeah. strange <laughs> theories. And um, certainly nothing I could relate to. Plus the fact, anyway, I couldn't even go on the internet. You know, it was like a catch-22 situation. 
I couldn't use the internet to, um, to, to, to try and research this. Um, so it was, yeah, it was, uh, so that, that's really the best explanation I have. So it's all these things. And really, why are EMFs so important? That's, that's the question is, you know, what is it about EMS? Well, I believe that, so there's all these toxins and there is actually a research paper on this. Um, and the, 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 the reason EMS is so important because EMS is like a super toxin. So it's like the mother of all toxins. And what that means is you've got all these toxins in your toxic barrel and then you add the EMS on top of it. And it's not mm -hmm. two plus two equals four. It's two plus two equals 10, 100 or 1,000. Mm -hmm. right. And that's what happens. And that is the problem. Because we're actually, we are subtle energy beings. And, you know, science, mainstream science even, is to a certain, does to a certain extent recognize that. And this is, even if, well, that's probably a bit of a, an exaggeration. Well, they're, they're but, dragging their feet um, every step of the way, but they are yeah, starting to acknowledge. Feet. What I'm saying is, from literally over 50 years ago, we've known this. If you look at the research done by uh, Dr. Robert Becker, who's one of the pioneers, who's um, a former Nobel, um, Nobel uh, Prize nominee, um, then he, uh, he, he really he did the studies on this, and he realized that uh, in the cells, then it, it's all about um, electrical electromagnetic impulses. That's how right. the cells are communicating. So if That's we're... Right. If we're throwing out these these frequencies, which we are more and more and more, notably since the introduction of wireless, then come on, folks, what do you expect? <laughs> Why is yeah. this all these? And I'm not saying EMFs are to blame for everything, but I believe they have a big part to play in what's happening in terms of disease in this world. And, you know, uh, cancer, notably, we know we, we, that that's skyrocketing autoimmune Absolutely. diseases, neurological diseases, you name it, then, you know, it, because it's, it, it, these EMFs affect the basic building blocks of our body, which are the cells, these 50 trillion cells or 100 trillion cells, depending on who you read. Uh, but the, all these cells, that's how they're communicating through uh, electromagnetic impulses. That's right. Well, your analogy of EMF is sort of the mother of all toxins that, that really, I, that really speaks to me quite strongly because, you know, a normal healthy body when exposed to EMF is obviously it's not going to be good, but the reaction is going to be much different than a body that has been consuming weaponized things such as the GMO food and the fluoridated water with the lead and the mercury and whatnot and what and whatever else the vaccines yes and the vaccines of course mm -hmm. but yeah it's going to be substantially different now my I, th I think a lot of people have this question is that how is the mainstream scientific establishment how is it that they ignore this problem of EMF when the evidence of its harm is so unbelievably ample and also well, another another part to that question is where can you recommend that people can go to to find independent scientific analysis that proves how toxic wireless is to human health well the health of everything yeah, and, and the health the of the environment as well right well it's i think it's very simple um, look at the funding, you know, mainstream, the mainstream scientific establishment. The problem is the funding. Who is the problem is who is funding the studies and the studies. The problem is that it, it's not the scientist's fault. The scientists can't get the I mean, I've spoken to uh, a lot of these scientists who are on the cutting edge of this. And the scientists, brilliant, brilliant people, they cannot get the funding to do the, the studies that they need to do. And some of these people, they're funding the studies out of their own pockets. That's, that's how difficult it is. And so, what, so the studies that are getting funded, who are they getting funded by? They're getting funded by the utility companies and the telecom, the telecom industry. And so it's that they they have this tremendous power through um, you know through through um, their industry through because they, they they've got this massive massive um, 
money making industry with this massive, massive lobby who the, the, it's in their interest. It's life or death, really, for them to make sure that people don't catch on to the fact that these EMFs in different shapes and forms, be it cell phones, Wi-Fi or, or whatever, or even just the electricity. We'll, we'll talk about that later if you want. But uh, that these EMFs in so many in, in all these different forms are potentially so dangerous. And that's what's going on. And um, if you're looking for a great resource on that, then um, I recommend uh, there's, a, there's a book called Disconnect, which has been written by um, Deborah Davis, PhD, uh, which looks at the dirty tricks. Uh, you know, let's call a spade a spade. And this is really yeah. not my arena because I'm what I'm really interested in is helping people. But I know what's going on. And it's for me, it's just, you know, so, so obvious um, what is going on. And the, the, the facts are being distorted. And it's really, the, the, it's, it's totally wrong and unethical what, what's been done. And what, well, you could talk about is, it. You could say anything you want on this show, just so you know. We know there's an agenda, an yeah, energetic really, well, war well, against humanity. Yeah, and I actually knew um, the answer to my, don't, the question I just asked. I just needed to hear you <laughs> yeah, say it. No, <laughs> believe me. Uh, if, yeah, I, I appreciate that. And um, I appreciate you giving me this space to say anything I want. But... Um, Honestly, I'm not a warmonger, and you, when you've been where I've been, I'm looking, my, the way to deal with this is not to make, for me anyway, this is my opinion, is not to make, I'm not at war with the cell phone companies, with the utility companies, despite what I've gone through. That is not the, that is not the answer. And, you know, for me, the answer is about harmony. And it's about, really, my approach is about solutions is about bringing solutions and um yeah it, it's not about it's not about a fight because a lot of these people and that and, and that is important because people that are because there'll be all kinds of people listening to your show but we can put them in two categories there'll be if somebody's listening to this now if they're still listening to what i've been saying here then either they are health conscious and kind of know that there is something with these EMFs, something about these EMFs, and they want to know more about it. Or the like, from what I gather, you you guys are you, uh, Gabe and, and Sharon here, that um, they are sensitive and they're getting a reaction to these EMFs. And and so the problem is, is when you start getting a reaction to these EMFs, you start to go into all these kind of what I call low vibrational states. Um, mm -hmm. And the the anger and the frustration and maybe the, you know the depression. I went through all that and um, yes. you know all and this. So did we this, with so did we with our topic. We we did too. Well, sure. Our topic is related. Sure. We'll talk about it but, later. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But what you have to say is, you know, does does this really serve me? And the point is, it doesn't. It doesn't. And That's so right. what you need, because the more you focus, you know, law of attraction, <laughs> the more you focus on something, then the more it manifests in your life. And so the more you focus on the problem on the cell phone industry and on the uh, utility companies and on what's going on and everything that's going on that shouldn't be going on, then honestly, as a from the perspective of dealing with this and finding a solution in your life, it's not the way to go. That's it's right. And it's actually and so just, it's actually in in the company's interest for you to be in that state and for you to think that the only solution is to fight them on their terms because as long as it's on their terms, they will always emerge the victor. Right, they got all the money. That's right. <laughs> and exactly. when you when you fight it on your terms, which is to get rid of the phone, they can't win. <laughs> they can't win at yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I again, I don't use the word fight. But it's about um, taking action. It's about taking action, and um, it's about dealing. It's a, it, it's about the process of change, very simply. And that is a hard thing for people, is because so many people, uh, because you know, in 2002, it wasn't like today. It wasn't it's not like the iPhone six or whatever it is now, 6s or I don't know what it is, but. Um, it was, it's just a thing that you telephone uh, people, you know, people call me and I would call them and that was it. 
Whereas now, uh, these things, you know, they're so sophisticated and there's so much, they can do so much, but also there's so much pressure to have kind of, particularly with the youngsters, to have the latest uh, smartphone and whatever. And so it's yeah. very, very difficult. Um, and it, it's not just about the smartphones, obviously, but um, it's very, very difficult to not be like everybody else. Um, That's right. So, yeah. And it's and, so and, ingrained. The technology is so ingrained now. It's be, it's become a part of everything. You know, people's jobs, people have jobs that without the cell phone, the job would cease to exist. We had jobs like exactly. that. Gabriel and yeah. I, we both worked as extras in Hollywood. And you very, had very noble, respectable yeah. profession. You, you had to have the cell phone <laughs> with you, you know? Well, you know, we needed to work, right? And so yeah. you had to have the cell phone with you and you had to sleep with it next to you because you never know when they call you for work or say, hey, you got to come in earlier. The call time's changed. So you also cool. had to have it with you all day or you wouldn't work the next day. So, yes. and then it's more than that. I see the kids on the subways, well, on the above ground ones anyway, where there's reception, even under the ground, they're playing video games on the phones and above ground, they're taking each other's pictures and taking selfies with their phones and playing terrible. Excuse me while and, I go vomit. Yeah, please. but it's, it's yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely like you said, a lower vibrational state. So it's yeah. not just the brainwashing content. I believe it's not just about the content of what they're looking at, but the energy itself is taking us down to a lower state of it being. Is. It, is. it makes us sick. It makes us sick and we can't think straight. In and so many different ways. Yes. Yes. And we have trouble thinking answer. straight without the EMF. So. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah, right. But just to answer, just to finish, uh, to answer your question, uh, your question, Gabe, what, what you asked me initially, uh, the, a resource uh, for um, uh, getting the facts on this. Well, the, the what I recommend is that you and this is a free resource um, is, is that people that want to know the facts, want to read the studies and have got a penchant for that. Then they go to the it's called a bio initiative report and it's on bio initiative dot org so it's all one word bio initiative and that was a report which was published first published in 2007 which was put together by 14 independent leading scientists from around the world and they reviewed the previous 30 years of uh, studies on emfs and they came to the conclusion that there are adverse biological effects from these low level non ionizing emfs i can explain what that means uh, in, a, in a little while if you like but um oh, yes. so that was initially in 2007 and then so that was 30 years study and they reviewed uh, 2000 peer reviewed studies should i say okay so not just any old studies here not just any old scientists either um 2000 right. peer reviewed studies um and then in 2012 they did an update to that um, and the update, so the initial report was something like 600 pages. And it's not for everybody because it's heavy reading. And I confess I've not read all of it, but I've, I've read most of it. And I've read parts of it many times. Um, and then in 2012, another report, uh, another update came out, which reviewed the 1800 new research papers in the intervening period. So there's a lot more research papers in the, in the intervening right. period. And another um, of that same time block has passed, so it's probably close to time for another update and however much more to be built on top of that because we've had right. there, so there much more studies, of an increase since then. Even Yes, and there are studies coming out all the time, um, and, but the, 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 there are unfortunately, um, I have to say this also, is there is no, because people are always looking for this, like yeah, the doubting Thomases, the conclusive proof about this well the the truth is there's going to be a long time before we get the conclusive proof because what i've explained before because of the dirty tricks okay so that's what's going to be that's what's happening mm -hmm. is the the science is being manipulated that is very very clear and so you need to look at the 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 independent studies and there are some great uh, resources on that. Uh, the Bionish Report is one, and there's lots of great books on that also that I can recommend that people, if, if people want to research this further. But um, yeah, but the actual, you know, for instance, the, one of the big questions is, uh, do, cell phones, do cell phones cause cancer? And the truth is we can't say 100% um, you know, that cell phones cause cancer 
but the there there isn't the concrete proof that links um, these exposures, the, these uh, EMF exposures to cancer, for instance. Um, and, 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 and the reason I said there isn't is because the science is being manipulated. So there are studies that are showing clear association, clear correlation between these exposures and between um, between uh, lots of different um, uh, illnesses, uh, not just cancer, but uh, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, suicide, epilepsy, sterility, infertility, insomnia, tinnitus, and the list goes on, believe me. Um, um, but yeah. But but because the science has been manipulated, then people are being led to believe that this the, the, these frequencies, these man-made frequencies, are perfectly safe, and they're not. Mm -hmm. Well, they're invisible too, and so people have a very hard time with invisible phenomena. But people know that radiation, nuclear radiation, even though it's invisible causes illness. So I'm hoping right. that over time, this will become something that people can understand that I've seen a documentary, which it's actually posted on my site, if you go to the kembo.com, under the mm -hmm. EMF category, resonance beings of frequency Correct. is an excellent yeah. and easy to watch documentary that explains yeah these problems and take back your power is another good one. I don't have it on my site because you, I think you have to pay a small fee now to see it. Um, mm -hmm. but definitely check out resonance and it talks about cancer clusters around cell phone towers that awesome. after 15 years of the tower being there, they're starting to see this problem of people with cancer. It does take a certain amount of time. Yes. Yes. Because there's the, um, the, what they call the latency period. And so it does take a long time. And we know this from um, from um, the various nuclear incidents um, in, in Japan, for instance. If you look back to the uh, the post-war um, Hiroshima, for instance, and, and, and Nagasaki, um, then we know that there is a 20, 30, 40 year latency period. Um, and so there is going to the truth is going to come out. At, at some point in time, uh, but but when exactly um, we don't know. Yeah, well, I actually always like to say that there is no such thing as proof. There is only evidence because there is always going to be some stubborn twit who is in <laughs> such a deep state of denial to say, "Oh, I don't believe it." So there's, the, to, in my mind, there is only evidence because, you know, proof is just. Like, like I said, someone can just say whatever they want about it and yeah, there well, is no proof. Look, yeah. there's enough yeah. to know. It's enough to know that you're having symptoms. Uh, Lloyd, you pointed to the year 2002 for you and mm -hmm. it's very interesting because that is around when I got a Wi-Fi for the first time okay. and I didn't really put two and two together with the, uh, the EMFs until recent years, but um, that's around when I started to feel lethargic all the time and, and that's would... also around the same time that cell phone towers started popping up yes. in mass in yes. the united states it may be related yes. because i was exhausted like you can't believe and i felt yes. this way for years and we got rid of our wi-fi only a couple of years ago but mm -hmm. after getting rid of the wi-fi i didn't feel as exhausted we're gonna. We're planning on filming a PSA where I smashed the unit with a hammer. Yeah, we kept it for that purpose. <laughs> that must have felt good. Well, I haven't done it yet. I'm. I'm, oh, I'm saving up. I'm saving up for the right hammer for the job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, actually, Lloyd, let, let's talk a little about devices because a lot of people don't know that there's things in their house that are hurting them. Like, for example, compact fluorescent light bulbs. That's one where many people don't know that they're releasing EMFs. So yes. can you go over the devices that are in our homes that we should be replacing and also describe what effects they have? Sure. Um, so, I, well, I guess the first, first thing really to talk about um, is the cell phone. Obviously, we talked about that uh, a little bit, but um, yep. the cell phone, um, cell phones, um, text don't talk. <laughs> uh, they're, they're, they're really, um, the cell phone, you should not be putting a cell phone next to your ear. And it might sound extreme, but 
Um, these are um, radio frequency microwave radiation transmitters. I know it looks cute, but um, the the no, the, it doesn't. The <laughs> Actually, the manual the, the manual says 60. not to put. The manual says not Correct. to put it to your ear. Correct. They actually, the manuals. They, they put it in very small print. They put it in sandwich very small between a bunch, a sandwich between a bunch of other things. So yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And for instance, on the iPhone, it tells you to keep it 15 millimeters away. But I say don't put it anywhere near your head because in your head is your brain, which is a very large organ which is um, something like 70% water. And so the imagine what happens, you know how a microwave oven works. I don't know if you've put anything, made the mistake of just putting something totally dry, for instance, a glass in a microwave oven, it doesn't do anything. But if you put a glass with some water in it, then it boils it. And so, and that's what it does to your brain, folks. That, that's, uh, that's the easiest way of understanding it. So, uh, but to, to, so, but we, can, we can talk about that more specifically, uh, if you like, but in, in the home, uh, really, um, so there's a, firstly, there's a, what I call the modem router, and I guess you guys say router, um, but I guess you understand what I'm saying. So yeah, this yeah. device <laughs> generates the same, unit. Wi the same unit, right? It, it generates this radio frequency signal, again, this microwave radiation in your home, and it's, you know, so the, the, the simple truth is this, if you can get... Why, if you can get a connection with your laptop, for instance, when you are uh, in your bedroom, then that means obviously, and the and the and the, and the Wi-Fi router is, for instance, in your living room, then that means that the Wi-Fi radiation, this wireless radiation, this radio frequency radiation, is penetrating walls to get to that. And if it can penetrate walls, it can penetrate you. And that's what it does. It penetrates you and it goes into your body and it perturbs your cellular mechanisms right down to your DNA. And yeah. the um, so that's the first thing is to, again, it sounds a little bit extreme, <laughs> but to eliminate your modem router and replace it or to or to re replace it with a version um, with a wired version, so to go hardwired, so that's the same stall yes. and ethanol table, and that that's is what we, we we get we give that advice to people on every show. Yeah, and, and most people don't want to do it, but I don't understand why something that was so simple in the year two thousand now seems like uh, insurmountable. Just get an Ethernet cable. That's that's part of what I was talking about <laughs> of how it's become ingrained. Well, we actually hardwired yes. our home. We have a an Ethernet only router with no right. Wi-Fi at all. And right. we're hardwired in our office downstairs and we're uh, hardwired upstairs in the living room. It's not right. that hard to do. No, it's not hard to do. And it's not terribly expensive. And actually I have a- $26, uh, the, the router was yeah, only $26 right. Nothing, by the way. You know, it's not got $26. <laughs> well, some people haven't, I know. But what I'm saying is it's not mega box to do this. And um, my, my cheapest solution was actually to buy, buy a wireless router, but with a button on where I could switch it off. And I have obviously uh, EMF meters, so I can confirm that it's not emitting this right. radio frequency radiation. And, and we'll so, talk to you about EMF readers a little bit later. We want to find out which ones are good and which ones are not so good. But uh, we'll, sure. we'll touch on that later. But uh, I think the next place we're going after Wi-Fi routers or router, other or routers, as you say, is, uh, <laughs> it, is the cordless phone. Exactly. You took the words out of my mouth. Yeah, the cordless phone. And there's been studies done on this um, in um, Switzerland. Um, and the it's like yeah, a mini cell phone it, tower in your exactly. In your... <laughs> it's, 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 it's very yeah. It's nice to know that you're well briefed on this, and it, so yeah, it's like a mini cell phone tower. And a lot of the, the worst thing is a lot of the people, the people have got these these cordless phones right next to their beds, and so it's yes. like a mini cell phone tower, folks, right next to your bed. Do you really want that? No, I do not think so. And the other thing to understand is. It's um, it's emitting and receiving from two places. So you've got the base, and then you've got the actual the handset. So if you yeah. take the handset away from the base, then there's a constant communication between the handset and the base. So we have a corded, and that communication is going right through you. We, we have a corded landline, <laughs> and it's very nice. Yeah, 
And again, it's like, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it was accepted. Everybody used these phones, were quite happy with it. But now we've all got to be able to walk around the garden or whatever, have enough phone calls, you know, a, a, a phone conversation, which is totally ludicrous. And when you think about what it's doing to your health, it's totally insane. Um, so, yeah, so that's the that's the, the next point is that is a cordless phones. The third point. So the fourth point um, is the microwave oven. I guess that's next yeah. on, the, on the list, which is just so convenient, isn't it? Because you can uh, get food straight out the freezer, bang it in there and 10 minutes uh, later it's piping hot. All those and you can nice preservatives and GMOs in your microwave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's lots of good stuff on the microwave and dangers. Um, and I wrote an article uh, on this very recently, but uh, very briefly. So a microwave oven, it's got this thing in it called a magnetron, which emits this microwave, this radio frequency radiation. And this is powerful. This is because when I was very sensitive um, back 2002, 2004, then I could literally feel this thing at like, you know, 10, 15 feet away in another room through, you know, walls and everything. Very, very powerful, way more powerful than your, your cell phone. Cause actually the cell phones are getting less and less powerful because very secretly, quietly telling nobody, the cell phone companies are actually get re reducing because obviously they know there's a problem and they're actually reducing the power of these devices. And so, and, and, and the, the, the technology is fantastic what they're using in them. And so they really, uh, they're, they're powering down um, very, very significantly. Um, and so, yeah, the, so the microwave radiation is yeah. big time radio frequency radiation plus magnetic fields. Okay. So yeah. obviously you don't want that. You do not want them, particularly um, pregnant mothers, you know, come on. Uh, well, I nobody wants it. I mean, Sharon, Sharon has two speeds that she runs at. One is the speed she runs at when she's jogging. The other is the speed that she runs at when she's trying to get away <laughs> from a microwave that someone has turned on in the room, right. and she's just trying to get away from it as fast as possible. Yeah, right. and exactly. uh, I had a job where I shared an office with two two people, and when someone would turn on the microwave, I'd see them go to the kitchen, and I'd hear the door to the microwave open. I would bolt out the door and let I them finish, you know, and then go back. Yeah, okay. So I'm preaching to the converted here, obviously, but um, yeah, it's it, it's huge. It's huge what's what the microwave ovens are giving off. Plus the fact, I just have to say very quickly, is that it's what it does to your food, folks. It's what it oh, does to your food. Yes. So, no, it's what it does to your body when the thing's switched on. And then it's what it does to your food. It renders it pretty, practically uh, devoid of of, of of vitamins and minerals. And there are studies on Assu this. Assuming there were any there in the first place. <laughs> assuming there were any there in the first place. And so it's totally, really, again, unnecessary. It just requires a little bit of forethought, a little bit of planning uh, to get the stuff out of the freezer, you know, in the morning before you go to work so you can have it at night or there's all kind if it's liquids, it's very quick to defrost anyway in a pan with some water. Um, so yeah, it, it's, uh, really totally unnecessary. And the next thing I would uh, draw your attention to is a really big one again is electric bedside alarm clocks. And again, um, this is this is a huge one, and the story I always tell is some a gentleman I spoke to a while ago called Lloyd Morgan, who's actually a senior researcher at the Environmental Health Trust. And what happened with him? He's actually a electrical engineer over 30 years working with EMFs. As a kid, was a radio ham operator, knows all about EMFs, thought he knew all about EMFs, and yet one day in an Indian restaurant in 1995, I think it was, boom a grand mal brain seizure just totally flunked out on the floor, carried him to the hospital. The surgeon uh, conducted major brain surgery to remove this tumor. Uh, Lloyd Morgan, he came around and he said to the surgeon, um, when he came to visit him, he said, what caused this? And the surgeon said, well, probably electromagnetic fields. And he was like, what? <laughs> but uh, I know uh, magnetic fields. And so when he came out of hospital, he bought himself an EMF meter. 
And he started going, but all he knew about was magnetic fields, electric magnetic fields. And we'll talk about that again later on, if you like, the different categories. But um, yes. so he bought an EMF meter and he started going around his home. And what did he find? He found that there were, he got this electric alarm clock and it was giving off something like 12 milligauss right next to his bed, which was right next to his head. I'll have to check and, that out too, because yeah. I've been sleeping with the same alarm clock since 1994. And I think it's, I was very amused by it because it was my first uh, possession that I bought when I moved out of my right. parents' house. But right. uh, I've been sleeping with this alarm clock, electric, next to my head for 22 yeah. years. Well, okay. we'd like to talk more about this in hour two. We got just a few minutes left here before we have to go to break. But uh, Lloyd, I wanted to give you a chance to again state your website and uh talk about you know your anything you'd like to plug this is the time sure, to do it the plug. it's the time for the plug <laughs> well the website <laughs> electricsense.com and that's all one word electric sense as in common sense so s-e-n-s-e.com electricsense.com and it's about if you want to really it's the place to go if you want to know the truth about electromagnetic fields and more than that it's about what to do about them and that's really important the solutions about what can you do and that's really what i've been focusing on and it's an ethical um it's an ethical approach because i'm not the guy who sells all these gadgets um i'm the guy who's been through this been through the pain and i didn't want to um i've used the gadgets tried all the gadgets and for me the gadgets didn't work and we'll talk about the gadgets again later on, if you like, because there's, that's a whole other yeah. story. But um, and I'm not I'm not against the gadgets, just to say very quickly. But yeah, electricsense.com, and there you have information about what to do. Really, what the dangers are. Firstly, you know, should I be concerned? And the truth is, you it's not about being concerned. It's about taking action. Unfortunately, uh, but usually, often we need to be concerned or worried before we take any action. So the facts are there, and it's all. It's it's in a form which um, it, because it, it is a technical subject, so it's a form which people can easily understand, and that has been my goal from the beginning is to put it in all this in layman's terms, and and then there's lots of resources on there, and I do reviews of meters, and um, I've written several ebooks on this, I've done webinars, and I do a regular podcast all about EMFs and dealing with EMFs and helping people that are having problems with these emfs so there we are electricsense.com you should have just called it common sense actually i was thinking that's just as good a name. <laughs> well yes. that was the idea electric sense common sense a common sense approach to uh, emfs electromagnetic fields is exactly well, well, I, I love your website and i have a link to it off of my website thekembo.com uh, so if you go to emf there you'll find some information different websites you can go to including lloyd's website electricsense.com our website is thekembo.com. That's T H E C H E M B O W.com. That's like a chemical rainbow. And uh, we actually do make gadgets. So we, uh, we do everything we can to remove EMF from our lives, but we make gadgets to help you if you have it coming in your walls from your neighbors. That's our organite. That's right. That's a common problem, actually, is people getting rid of it in their homes and they're freaking out and thinking, but everyone else around me has them. What do I do? What do I do? And, but we can, <laughs> talk about, we can talk about that a little bit more in hour two. So anyway, that is electricsense.com. That's Lloyd's website. And ours is www.thekembo.com. And from there, you can also check out our blog, thekembo.tumblr.com. And there are a variety of other links there as well, including a link to the event that we will be doing in Los Angeles. But we'll talk about that later. Thanks for listening and join us again in hour two for the Human Frequency on American Freedom Radio. American Freedom Radio.
Welcome back. You're listening to The Human Frequency on American Freedom Radio. This is Sharon here with Gabe, and I just wanted to let you know that Gabe and I are going to be in L.A. for a four-day event from April 7th through 10th, so we hope to meet you all there. It's the 5D event at LAX Holiday Inn, and we'll have a booth with our Organite and lots of information on Orgone Energy. And on the 8th, I'll be doing a public talk about Orgone Energy, how we've used it to neutralize the weather weaponry in California and restore the climate and end the drought. And if that all sounds a little bit huge and strange, that's okay. I understand. I'm also going to be talking about the cover-up of Orgone Energy from the time of Wilhelm Reich, its discoverer, how he was taken down by the U.S. government for discovering an energy that could be used to cure cancer and end drought. So it's, it's a lot to talk about in this talk. I'm not just going to talk about chemtrails. There are other people who are doing that. <laughs> I'm going to talk about free energy solutions. Anyway, you can check out the link to that on our website, thekembo.com. And the URL, I believe, for the event itself is alienevent.com. And that's all one word exactly as it sounds. We're here with Lloyd Burrell. He's from electricsense.com, and he's helping to educate us on the effects of electromagnetic fields, EMFs. And uh, we're going to get into dirty electricity in this hour. Uh, when we were, were, before we went to the break, we were talking about devices in our homes that are emitting EMF and what we can do. So, Lloyd, we were just talking about alarm clocks. I was very surprised. Yeah. You really... We were very alarmed. Yeah. You really taught me something <laughs> on this one. You know, I never heard of that. So uh, let's yeah. continue because we're yeah. talking about the uh, magnetic fields now. Is that right? Uh, yes. So the alarm clocks, the, the big issue there is the uh, magnetic fields. And particularly if you've got an old um, alarm clock, then it could well be a problem. Um, but yeah, the really... Um, the be the way to the way to resolve that issue is to use a battery clock instead, and that's why ah. we don't have. Yeah. Hmm. Well, nothing. Like, again, that's well, now, the whole now subject. I have to... The bedroom. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. No, I was going to say that. That's a whole other subject. The bedroom, but you shouldn't. Ideally, you shouldn't be sleeping with anything electrical in your bedroom at all, because it's super, super important that that is you create a safe sanctuary in terms of the frequencies that you're sleeping in. And then the environment you're sleeping in uh, should be as natural as possible. And think back to the caveman, the kind of environment he was sleeping in. And he was earthed as well, which is a whole other subject. We can talk about that if you want also. <laughs> but uh, oh, yes. yeah, so certainly get rid of that uh, clock, electric clock radio if you've got one. We, um, have, we have a laptop in our bedroom that plays rain sounds to help drown out the hum of the smart meters around us. <laughs> yes. We don't have a smart meter, but our neighbors have them. Well, my question yeah. is, are we just substituting one problem with another? I tend to think so, yes, I do. Uh, um, and honestly, because again, we're subtle energy beings, and that's really what I've discovered through all this, is just how darned, I should say, I could say, but it's not. How wonderfully sensitive I am. And um, and I guess this is another really, um, again, I'm going off at a bit of a tangent here, but it's really the more you embrace that, then the more you will move out of this state of dis-ease into a state of ease and, 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 and optimum health. Mm. And that's super, mm. super important. And so you don't want to be fighting this thing of, oh, my God, then I've got this again, I've got that again, I've got these symptoms. And the more you, you, you're in that kind of mindset, then the more you're actually feeding those symptoms. Um, but anyway, yeah. I'm going yeah. off the tangent. Well, we, yeah. I actually want yeah. to get to that next, which would be what can we do right. but about our neighbor's right. stuff and all these. But let's finish with what's in our house. But just to finish yeah. very quickly, yeah, on the, on the house. So uh, the next thing... Um, Really, I need to just draw your attention to is computers, obviously, because everybody's got these computers now. And um, that is really um, so uh, ex just putting the, the, the wireless to one side for a minute, then just the computer itself um, emits um, EMFs on lots of different frequencies um, and actually um, different different computers um, different brands of computers emit EMFs 
on different frequencies. For instance, Apple computers, they're putting something like 25 kilohertz, which is like dirty electricity, which we're going to talk about uh, in a minute. But um, onto the onto your house wiring, Dell computers, Dell towers, they put something like 16.6 .6 kilohertz onto your house wiring. And so, yeah, com um, computers um, really, uh, you've got to be very careful as to what kind of computer you're using and how Let's you see. use it. And so even a, a lap so even even a laptop that has its Wi-Fi adapter disabled and is not plugged into the internet is still doing something. Yes, correct. And okay. uh, and it's emitting electric fields and magnetic fields. And um, again, different laptops work in different ways and are emitting at different frequencies. The problem, so the, the, then the question is, well, you know, desktop or laptop, and everybody seems to have laptops or tablets these days. So here we are in order of preference. Is tablets? No, that is to be avoided. Why? Because you've a lot of these touch screen, you've got this uh, proximity, which you can't avoid. And with when you're dealing with EMS, there's really something super, super, super important, which you need. To, there's only if you only remember one thing from what I've said today is this is distance is your friend. Ah. And that is why you'd see so you're always trying to put as much distance between the source of the MX, AMF exposure and you. And in this case, the source is the, the computer. And that is a problem is that the, the, the tablets by definition of how you have to use them is you use them in very close proximity. So afterwards, mm -hmm. the laptops, then um, the laptops, the problem with the laptops is people are using them on their laps. And so you're exposing yourself notably in your nether regions, testicles or, you know, uh, in that part of your body to these electric and magnetic fields. There's been studies done on this again uh, for and it's showing that uh, very clear links between um, infer infertility and uh, ster sterility. Um, and so that aside, um, I don't really have an issue with laptops. Again, each kind of computer is different. But I would, mm -hmm. what I will say is that it's way, way um, better to, if you're using a laptop on a regular basis to have an external keyboard and to have an external wired mouse. And thirdly, because, of it, because the problem is with the laptop is if you're using the keyboard, which is above, which is actually part of the laptop, then you're... The, the the actual processing music, the CPU on the computer is right below um, where you put in your hands, um, and that leads to all kinds of problems. And a lot of people, a lot of uh, problem, uh, a common problem is carpal, uh, carpal, uh, what is it called? Carpal, carpal tunnel syndrome. Tunnel syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and people are developing that, and they're thinking, oh, it's this repetitive thing. But it's, I'm not convinced about that, and I have heard. Um, Theories about that, and again, it's only theories, but certainly, yeah, so that it's better to have uh, this external keyboard and external wide keyboard, obviously, an external wide mouse for regular. I know it's not, for instance, you're going to LA in a few days. Well, I'm the same. If I'm going away, you know, on vacation, then I just take the laptop with me and then I'm using it on Wi Fi because that's the only way to use it. And I've got a website, and if I want to keep uh, contact with my website and with what's going on, then I have to do that. But there's a difference between yeah. doing that and living with Wi-Fi and, uh, and exposing yourself to these um, artificial man-made frequencies um, all the time. Yeah, so that's really right. There, there are some times when it's unavoidable. But yes, we, hear, we understand what you're saying. When it's your right. home base, you have to make sure that right. you have as few of these makes sense. interferences makes, as possible. It makes sense big time, yeah. And so really my preference is for the what I have is um, it's actually uh, a Mac Mini, and uh, and and, it, and it's uh, it's all hardwired. And why do I prefer that? Because it's 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 all uh, the, the keyboard is separate and it's away from the CPU unit, and it's a separate screen and uh, it's a low EMF screen and um, and yeah. So you can that is really the the ideal solution to my mind. Um, that's my own personal view and different people, different experts, if you want. And I say what, because people say, oh, you're an EMF expert. No, I'm uh, an expert on electrical sensitivity, on dealing with my electrical sensitivity. Right. And so that's yeah. where I'm coming from. Yeah. We have so much we want to ask you. I yeah. hope we can get to everything. I definitely yeah, want sorry, to I'm know. Yeah, I'm going on a bit. Yeah. 
Uh, no, no, it's, no, uh, it's no. okay. <laughs> we, I, we're actually learning quite a bit. I, the, I, the thing with the our 22-year-old alarm clock is very interesting, actually. <laughs> I, now I have two things to smash with the hammer. Don't so. smash my alarm <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, but I think I will replace it with a battery-powered one. Uh, but this is very fascinating. I do want to know the difference between electrical and magnetic fields. I want to get into right. dirty electricity. And I also want to make sure that we have time to talk about what to do about the stuff coming in from outside our homes. So uh, where right. do you want to start? Do you want to start with <laughs> the difference between the um, magnetic so and I, electrical I maybe fields? Maybe if we just give a quick yeah, an overview of just what EMFs are, maybe that will um, bring some clarity to this. Uh, because it is fuzzy, this whole thing, and it is a little bit scary as well. And that's why people tend to shy away from this subject. Um, and it, it, yeah, I mean, when I uh, became electrically sensitive, then it was, I didn't want to know about all this, really. I just wanted to get on with my life and be able to use my cell phone again. And I just was not interested in electromagnetic fields or how they worked. So here's what you need to know very, very simply and quickly, is there are basically four categories of um, electromagnetic fields. And the whole, this whole um, electromagnetic fields you know, actually, we um, th we live in an electromagnetic world, and yet so few people realize this. And it is very important because we're electromagnetic beings. We're subtle energy beings. And so this is not just um, like uh, science stuff, which is not relevant to your life. It's just hugely relevant and hugely important. And so the way to understand um, these electromagnetic frequencies is uh, through something called the electromagnetic spectrum and that is something you can see on the internet and just go you put electromagnetic spectrum in google or whatever search engine you use and you'll get this nice pretty um, diagram with um, these different sources of electromagnetic fields um, in there and so really there's four categories and really just yeah on the on this electromagnetic spectrum we're going from house wiring which is very low frequency so in the us you're on about you're on 60 hertz precisely 60 hertz or you should be anyway 60 hertz per and that means 60 cycles per second in europe we're on 50 hertz so 50 cycles per second so that's called uh, what's known as elfs extremely low frequency and i'm sorry there is a lot of terminology here but i'll just go over it very quickly but um so that's at the low end and then we're moving up through um for instance power lines um, and radio towers, TV, FM radio, cell towers, we're, and there we're in the gigahertz, and you probably heard that uh, term before, and that means in billions yeah. of cycles per second. So, and that's the thing is that the, it's, it's kind of difficult to visualize because the one minute we're t I'm saying 50, 60 cycles per second in your house wiring, and then I'm saying a billion cycles a second, okay? Yeah, this and, is why we don't uh, like cell towers. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So you know all about this, and and then and they're pretty to, ugly too. Yeah, pretty ugly too. Yeah, we have yeah. ones that look like palm trees when here you see in, them, in when California. You see them. Some, yeah, some do you have the palm are, tree in, ones in France? We don't have the palm tree <laughs> ones. No, no, I don't think we allow that in France. But our our, uh, our favorite is when the fake leaves fall off and we take them home. It's like Indian scalps, like we just kind of right. save them and, you know, <laughs> mount them on the wall. You know that kind of. Well, stuff. because we okay. defeat cell towers, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> okay okay um so yeah so then we're going from these low frequencies through the cell phone frequencies and up to into the what's called ionizing uh, radiation which is gamma rays and x-rays and that's basically electromagnetic spectrum very quickly and what i talk about on my website is four categories of emfs and uh firstly radio frequency radiation which is what uh, cell phones are using, what Wi-Fi is using, what cell towers are using, what smart meters are using, um, often, not always, but often. Um, and then we have, um, and then we go down, and as we go down in frequency, then with the, there is, we're able to disassociate the electric component from the magnetic component. And the electric component we call electric fields, which we measure in volts per meter, and that is basically a measure of potential and the magnetic fields are measured typically in gauss or mini gauss or tesla 
And that that is another issue is that these different magnetic these different uh, EMFs are measured. Uh, there's lots of different measurement unit measurement units, and it's really pretty confusing for people that come into this for the first time as to you know exactly uh, understanding this. So you've got these electric fields and these magnetic fields, which are at these low frequencies. And then beyond that, what's happening is we've got this, what, what's called commonly called dirty electricity, which is actually intermediary frequencies. And what that is, is so on your house wiring, what you should have is a nice, beautiful, clean uh, sine wave, a nice 60 hertz uh, sine wave. You probably remember that from the science class. And you probably, maybe you can recall, you had this thing called a, an oscilloscope, which looked like a kind of an old fashioned TV thing. And you saw this sine wave moving up and down. Well, that's it. That's what all this should be. And what happens is because of uh, these devices, for instance, the CFLs, which you were talking about, Sharon, earlier, and yes. because of, for instance, dimmer switches and because oh, yes. of, well, computers. But I can't sit under a dimmer switch. Meters, one hour. I'm sorry, right, I didn't mean to interrupt yeah. you, but one hour yeah. under a dimmer switch and I get a headache. Right, because these devices have got um, what's called uh, SMPS, which is switch mode power supplies. And what that means is, for instance, the CFLs, um, the compact fluorescent lights, they are, they, they've got, they, what it does is it chops the current. So why does it chop the current? To save energy, okay? So there was a, this is all kind of market driven, which was following from the, the oil crisis in in the 70s, you know, and and because of the sudden realization, hey, we're we're reliant on the the, the 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 oil and the Arab countries, and so we need to find a solution. So they, 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 there's a big move towards this uh, kind of technology, but unfortunately, the downside is it's highly detrimental to our health, and so these CFLs, for instance, are chopping the current at something like 20,000 times a second. 20,000 times a second. That's, and that is that's what's unbelievable. Well, for most corporations, what is actually between you and I, it's seen as a downside to them as an upside. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the, but yeah, but to be fair, it's, you know, this is, um, it's driven, you know, whereas I honestly feel that we are as much at fault as anybody. It's the consumer. Yes. And true. it's true. There's the no problem reason is, we have to, yeah. Yeah, the problem is, is we've been the, the the information is being manipulated, and most people are not looking at the facts, are not going to the right places to get the information, to get the truth about what's going on. And That's so they're very just, true. They're just I mean, the layperson, where... the layperson is going to make the choice between read about scary cell phone radiation or basketball and Cheetos. And exactly. <laughs> you know which one exactly. they're going to choose every time. Because we've all got such busy lives. And you think, well, EMFs, well, who gives us stuff about EMFs? Until something happens to you. You think, oh, my God, what's going on? What is this? You know, the cell phone, this reaction I'm getting. And then you start to do something. And then I'm not going to say it's too late, but it's very, very, very difficult uh, to deal with. So, yeah, just to resume. So four kinds of EMFs under this umbrella term EMFs, you've got electric fields, magnetic fields, what's called dirty electricity, which is a higher frequency, and it's an intermediary frequency be between these electric field, magnetic fields, and what's at the top, the radio frequency radiation. And this is all what's supposedly safe, what our governments are telling us are supposedly safe, all these frequencies are safe, because they are non-ionizing, that's to say there isn't sufficient energy to break electrons from molecules, I see. as opposed can to I ask you, uh, gamma rays. Right. Well, can I ask you? Uh, here, they tried to do a light bulb ban in the United States, and we could still get incandescent bulbs. That's what we use in our home. I don't see anything mm -hmm. wrong with using a nice incandescent. And to save energy, we turn off the lights in the rooms we're not in. So you know, Sarah, that's lot... exactly it. And the problem is that people are living in these homes and they got all this lighting. I'm really keen on that, you know, because we've got kids and uh, my youngest is, what, 17 now. So, but, but I forever tell him, you know, switch the light. If you're not upstairs, switch the light off. You know, exactly. only have lights on in the rooms where you are and keep the lighting to a minimum. And that is the way to save energy. It's not with the CFLs and all these polluting um, te technologies. 
So can I ask you about the LEDs? A lot of people say, well, I have to have an energy efficient light bulb. Uh, I yeah. don't like the lighting of the LED. And I've heard of some health issues, especially with sleep patterns, um, yes. because the circadian rhythms being disrupted by this type of lighting. Now, Correct. I don't use LEDs, but a lot of people I know use them. Are they safe? Um, well, um, I don't believe they are. As a, the, the, the problem, uh, the best kind of LEDs is, is you're better to go with a form of lighting where there isn't a transformer. Uh, because if there is a if there is a trans so if you're converting between because most of those lights are working on DC direct current whereas the the current coming in is AC alternating current so they've got this device which is now a switch mode power supply which I was saying before and that chops the current and that is the problem so you if you are using an LED you want to be using an LED where there is no transformer no uh, what looks like a, a little it's usually a little black box no uh, kind of transformer uh, unit with it. I see. Uh, well, I wanted to ask you also, since we're dealing with so much EMF coming in from outside, like here we have opted out of the smart meter. We have an analog meter. Every single neighbor around me has a smart meter. And yes. we also live near a fire station. And I don't like the looks of that <laughs> communication tower <laughs> there. Uh, we sleep under the EMF canopy that we learned about from, from your site. We watched your video. Okay. And uh, it's the New Daylight, I think it's called. Very it's good, from yes. Rad. Yeah, radmeters.com. Yeah, yeah, and yes. we looked at your video and we set it up just like that. Uh, we I have like the it. same small one. And I'm happy with it. I feel that I sleep better with it. Can we talk about uh, more about shielding? What do you do about the neighbors' right. Wi Fi's and smart well, meters? Yeah, I'll tell you. Here's the thing is that in. 99.9% .9 again it goes back to what I was saying before I was said to you if you recall people that are listening there's if there's only one thing you want to retain from this conversation is that distance is your friend and what I'm saying here and the, and the reason why that is is a, a, a mathematical explanation to that if you want and that is something called the inverse square law and that means that when you uh, when you put uh, only a small distance between you and the EMF source, then that uh, the the reduction in, in exposure is is very significant. For instance, if you put a cell phone um, next to your head, and then you move that cell phone six inches away from your head, which is about fifteen centimeters, then the reduction in that's about a hundred times further away than if it was, you know, in, further away from your brain than if it was right next to your ear. Okay, something like that, about a hundred times further away. Well, that moving it six inches away results in a hundred thousand times reduction in exposure. I see. Because of this inverse squared law, and a lot of things in nature work in this way. They work in a in a non-linear exponential way. And so what I'm saying here is that. A lot of people get it, be in the bonnet about that cell tower, about that Wi-Fi that the neighbors got, about that um, fire station transmitter you were saying, um, about that um, smart meter. And very often, they the, the, the big problem is the EMFs that they've got in their home. So let's just say that that's not the case with you. Um, because you're really, I know you guys are really up on this, and um, that you've perhaps dealt with all that needs to be dealt with, though I would wager Not that yet. you haven't. Because, no, well, no, we have more questions. Have, <laughs> right, because until, I'll tell you better why you most. haven't. Is be, yeah, better than most, certainly. But the reason why you wouldn't be able to is because until you have a, an EMF meter, then you wouldn't, you couldn't possibly know everything all the emf hotspots in your home and that's well, what that's... i'm saying is that yeah that is the thing to deal with is what's going on in your home and we're back to the thing is you focus on deal with what you can deal with and the rest we'll look at that afterwards but already get you know if you want to get obsessive about this get obsessive about what's going on in your home environment about that environment which you have control over 
And that's not right. And that's that's, that's so true. And you said even earlier that most of the time it's the consumer that's to blame. And I absolutely agree with that. This people need to take personal responsibility. And exactly. And this is, We're all I, 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 kind of. Yeah. 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 We are. We are. And uh, so I don't have a cell phone. Why don't I have a cell phone now? Well, because, yeah, because I don't want to be uh, exposed to this. Um, when I go away, when I travel, last year I went to Ireland. Um, we got like, my wife's got like the latest iPhone. She's a complete nightmare with it. I'm always telling her off. Uh, <laughs> but um, I mean, it's great when you travel. But when you travel like me and you don't have a cell phone, you're a little bit lost. So I took this thing with me, this old Blackberry, which could text. And I just switched it on and off. Yeah, I've arrived. Yeah, I'm okay. All that kind of thing. But I don't actually yeah. own a cell phone. And that's the thing. So we're all feeding this because we're all having these. I say we're all, most people have got these cell phones and we're using them. And that's just feeding the whole thing. Uh, but yeah, Floyd, I'm very, I'm excited about not having one. Um, we moved up to the mountains here. There's one cell tower in our community, period. And only one. And we've gifted it already. Yeah. And, uh, well, he, Floyd doesn't know what that means yet, but that's what we do to the towers. I, well, I can, to, yeah, I can guess but, what that means. Yeah. But we yeah. can explain it more. But anyway, right. Um, right. I don't have my cell phone except when I travel now, which is right. like once a month. And it's so exactly. awesome. I and love I, not And I got it. rid of mine entirely. So we're so. sharing one oh, cell phone oh. for travel only. It's so okay. awesome. Yeah. So that's wonderful. three in this club. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, now, you mentioned uh, meters readers a little while back i wanted to ask you a question because we have a tri-field meter that okay. we've been using for uh about a, a year or so now I it's think. been a while it, it, i don't know how accurate i think it's decent but i noticed you had some digital meters on your site and yeah. we would love to know what's the best way to measure right. the fields okay so uh, that, and that is Sort of the million dollar question is what's the best meter and that's kind of what everybody always wants to know what's the best meter and the best meter is the best meter for you and so that depends on what you're looking for what your priorities are and also obviously what your budget is and all the meters that i um have reviewed uh tested if you want inverted commas because i don't have a laboratory obviously um but um that i've given an opinion on they're all what I, can, what I call consumer meters. And, but there is a great variation in price on these uh, consumer meters. And the thing is, everybody, well, I, for one, when I bought my first EMF meter, I just bought the cheapest thing I could find. Because I thought, well, yeah, I do. Because I was only kind of going into this without really believing what I was doing um, initially. And so that was a big mistake. And so the first thing is you need to buy the best meter you can afford. I'm not saying, you know, uh, put a mortgage on your house to buy this thing. But, yeah, the best meter you can afford. And um, really, uh, so, yeah, to, to, so the, for instance, the Trifield, it's a great meter for the price. It has its limitations. And all meters have got limitations. The big limitation with the Trifield, if it's a Trifield 100XE, is that it's fairly insensitive for measuring radio frequency radiation. So you can measure around your microwave oven, it'll tell you what's going on there. But then if it's around cell phones and cell towers, it's not going to be doing a lot. Okay. So really what I would suggest here, most people, it depends. And again, the first question is, what is your biggest concern? And so for most people, the biggest concern is the cell tower, the smart meter or the Wi-Fi. Um, and so therefore you're looking at radio frequency radiation and that means you want a radio frequency meter and um, of the meters which I've reviewed um, the re really if, if that is all you're interested in then there's a wonderful meter called the Acousticom 2 and um, which um, I've got a review on that on my website and it's a, just a beautifully deceptively powerful meter but hugely deceptively simple very, very simple, but uh, just so sensitive. Because the thing is, with these meters, there's only one thing which really counts. Once you've so there's a frequency range, if you want what it can actually measure. So on a on a radio frequency meter, it would be the it would be in terms of um, gigahertz. So it'll start off in the megahertz range, perhaps, and it'll go to uh, gigahertz. So it'll start in millions of cycles per second. Yeah, megahertz up to uh, gigahertz, billions of cycles per second. 
Um, so that, that's the first thing, what it can, its range, its frequency range. And the second thing is really hugely important is its sensitivity, because no meter is going to be as sensitive as you are if you're electrically sensitive in inverted commas, um, or just sensitive as you guys are. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're all sensitive. Um, but yeah, being aware of your sensitivity, so you're aware of your sensitivity. Um, and so no meter. Um, I mean, I was asked about one of my guests, he's got a $25,000 meter and he wow. said, look, it's not nearly as sensitive as, you know, I can go out to people and people are sensitive to these EMFs and this meter just can't get near them, you know, can't get near that sensitivity. So, um, so the acoustic on meter is a great choice. Um, because of this sensitivity. And really my second choice is a meter, which is, I've only just put a review on it, which is, uh, it's a cornet meter. And the cornet meters um, are wonderful meters. They are so sophisticated. So it's just the opposite of the acoustic gum because it's like the acoustic gum literally just switch it on and it's just, you got the flashing lights and the sound. And, uh, but it's very, very, very sensitive. And then the, the, the Cornet meter, so it's called the Cornet ED88T. And why do I like this meter? Okay, Cornet ED, E for Edward, D for Derek, 88T. The reason I like this meter is because it's like three meters in one. So it sounds a bit like, and that's probably why you bought the Trifield meter, except that really the Trifield is like two and a half meters in one because it's not so hot on the radio frequency radiation. Whereas the Cornet ED88T is actually... It started out life as a, because these meters have evolved. That's why, the, why I like the Cornet meters, because they're evolving all the time. And they, they, they're bringing out uh, you know, in, improvements all the time on these meters. And this new version is like three meters in one. So it can measure radio frequency radiation, electric fields, and magnetic fields, like the Cornet agreed. But the difference is, really, at heart, it's a radio frequency meter. That's to say it's a very sensitive radio frequency meter and it's good for measuring cell towers uh, cell phones wi-fi that fire engine uh, antenna down in the street that <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. that's very good to know i saw it on your site and um it was available also at radmeters.com i believe uh Correct. that's something i'm going to look into up updating the yeah. meter and there's yes. one major thing in our house that we haven't dealt with and that is the the dirty electricity which uh, you had advice about Stetzer filters or Stetzerizer filters right. to deal with that. So that is a very important thing that we haven't done. Yeah. Can you explain? Yeah. Okay. So just to be clear, I'm, I'm totally independent on this. Um, and I, you know, if I'm doing this, I do what I believe. And there are many solutions. So just to put, explain, explain very briefly what this dirty electricity is. So it's, these are intermediary frequencies so again, your house wiring should only have this nice, clean 60 hertz sine wave. And what happens because of all these modern technologies which we have now, we have these frequencies which have been generated because of these CFLs which are chopping this, uh, this electrical power because of these uh, different, the computer um, units which are with the, the, the switch mode power supplies which are chopping this power because of the dimmer switch which are chopping this power. Um, and that puts uh, frequencies on which are known as uh, transients and harmonics. And the common term for this is dirty electricity, and it's in the kilohertz range. So all this should be on there is, um, is this 60 hertz sine wave, and yet we've got these other frequencies. And it's really easy to remember is kilohertz, the way I remember it always is very simple, Kilohertz kills, okay? Ah. And this is actually from Russian research. The Russians um, did a lot of research on this in um, because, I believe, because of the work they did. A lot of it was because of the space race, and um, they did um, a lot of research on this. And they, um, so they ascertained that, um, that frequencies above two kilohertz in the two to 100 kilohertz range were particularly harmful to human health and the problem is that what is on your house wiring does not stay on your house wiring 
it it permeates out into the room permeates out into your home and into you and that is why there there is a problem with the, it's an issue that you need to deal with this dirty electricity and i will guarantee that well i would be very surprised if anybody listening does not have dirty electricity in their home okay uh, because it's a very very common problem unless they have nothing modern no dimmer switches um, no computer uh, well i wouldn't know how they would be listening to this if they didn't have a computer but right. everybody <laughs> Pretty what will have this. And so the way to deal with it, there is lots of ways to deal with it, but there is a solution. And uh, it's called, the, the, the solution is to use a meter called the Graham Stetson meter. Another name for it is called the micro surge meter. And it's really the simplest meter in the world because you just plug this thing into your wall and it gives you a number. And if it's below 50, you're okay. You don't need to do anything. And if it's above 50, then you need to do something. And the first thing to do really is to start, is to identify what are the devices which are causing this and try and eliminate those devices. And it's pretty simple to do that by process of elimination. Um, and then given that certain devices you don't want to chuck in the skip, um, in the, is it skip? That's probably an English term, but the trash can, okay? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah I know that you don't want to, okay. If there's certain things you don't want to uh, put in the trash can, like, for instance, your laptop computer or whatever, then you would int you can introduce uh, filters, dirty electricity filters to deal with this uh, dirty electricity to filter it. And these are capacitator filters which bring down, which can have the effect of bringing down the dirty electricity levels to in inverted commas, safe levels, which are below 50. And that's how it works for it, very simply. And you plug it into your outlets, right? Correct. So you plug it, so you go around. And um, and I actually interviewed uh, Dave Stetzer, who was the co-inventor of these devices a while back. And his recommendation is that you uh, insert that on your um, in the room where you've got the computer, in the room where you've got your TV, and then you go to your bedroom. Because again, the most important room in your home is your bedroom um, because you spend so much time there and because you, it's where you spend the night time. It's where you sleep. And that's where all these really important cellular processes are going on when you're sleeping. And we know that these EMFs affects, these EMFs um, affect our cellular processes. We know, most really important, that EMFs, exposures nighttime exposures impede the production of melatonin and that's super important i'm sure you you guys know about this yeah that's um, why you can't yeah, sleep sometimes yeah right that's it, why it's... you can't sleep because it's throwing out you throwing out your cycle because uh you should really you should be your body should be creating melatonin at night and it's this like it's the it's the mother of all hormones according to certain it's this wonder hormone and uh, if you don't get that, and, and then you, you so your body's still producing serotonin. And so that is the problem. It throws out this uh, circadian cycle. And, um, and so, yeah, so the, the place to start with this dirty electricity um, meter, this uh, Graham Stetson meter, this microsurge meter is in the bedroom and see what the readings are there. And start, um, start, if you do have high readings, then you put the filters in in that room and you just go room by room uh, dealing with all this. I see. Well, Lloyd, I'm going to put you on the hot seat for a minute here. What yeah. is the agenda? Yeah. What is the agenda behind smart meters? <laughs> um, well, in three agenda, words or less. I'm kidding. Well, you know what I'm going to say first is that I don't concern myself with the agenda. I concern myself with uh, providing solutions and helping people. So you, of you've course. got that. And, and yeah. so do we. But the agenda, yeah, the agenda is very clear. It's about control. It's about control. Um, it's not about the money. Um, because It's not about saving money. And that's what we're being told, that it's there, there are massive savings. And there's been studies done on this. And I don't believe that is the case. I believe it's about control. And I believe it's about exploiting people. 
unfortunately. Yes, because they uh, save a lot of money by going around to every single home and installing these things. And who knows right. how much they cost? <laughs> right. They're really saving right. money to do that. But when you say exploiting yeah. people, do you mean because of the higher bills that people are having? Or no, do you I mean, mean I mean, of... exploiting people in terms of the information, that, because it, we're living in the information age. I mean, I was reading something early on, uh, earlier today about Google, about what they're doing. And about and I've known this for a while, and you know, on my website I've got like Google Analytics, and I know they get all the information, they see all this information. I mean, I don't even understand like one tenth of it. There's so much information, and mine's only a relatively small website. But there, this information we're living in the information age, and this information is priceless because they they can really um, they're one step ahead of the game all the time, and so that's what that's what they want to know what the consumers' habits are people's habits are in the home and maybe there's even something um more unsavory than that um but I, i'm thinking something i mean really i'm not a conspiracy theorist at all but i'm thinking we are. something along <laughs> right so i'm minus uh, the theory and I'm, uh, yeah and i mean you know because despite all this i remain a very sort of pragmatic person and having said that, I'm very, I'm much more open to certain things now than I was before. And my eyes have really been opened by, by everything that's happened to me. But I tend to think that there is something, it's similar to what's happening with the water, is that I believe that there is some kind of dumbing down of the population. And it's about control. Um, and yeah, because these frequencies, because, you know, the, it's not just about the smart meter. It's about we're living in a smart world. And it's so that does, I'm not talking about smartphone either. I'm talking about your dishwasher. I'm talking about your oven. Uh, I'm talking about your your washing machine, your dryer, everything, your TV. Television, be, yeah. Yeah, it's all connected and they're all communicating among themselves. And you think that's healthy? No way. It's not healthy. I so like to control know. my machines, not have them control me. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. And you know, when I go, when I buy, when something breaks down, we have to buy a new machine. I mean, I'm like, the, the, I go around the local shop and it's, it's like you can see them. Oh my God, it's that weirdo again with his, with his meters. And we switch <laughs> everything off in the shop. And, you know, we buy according to, because I once bought like this big fridge, you know, refrigerator like the big American fridge, because that's all the rage now in, and has been for a while now in, in Europe. And I bought it off the internet and the thing arrived and I actually did a video on this and I plugged it in and I got my meter out and boom, there it was, radio frequency radiation. So it's a smart fridge and it was quite that's a terrible. fancy brand. Yeah. And so now what I do is I always buy from the shame shop and I always go an hour when they're not busy, like first thing in the morning and they switch everything off and we look what we're going to buy. And I always buy out the shop. I don't want anything which has come in because they, I don't know what it's going to be doing. Because the only way to know is with your own meter. Because these things have been, they're evolving all the time. So what somebody says on some website is good. Don't take their word for it. You get your own EMF meter. You know if it's good. If it starts shrieking like a Geiger counter, you know there's something going on there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and that's what I do. So they switch everything off in the shop. All the cordless phones. Everything. And they plug the thing in and we look what happens. And if it's all clean, then okay, we buy it. <laughs> There's plutonium in my refrigerator. <laughs> 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 well, Lloyd, can we talk a little bit? Uh, we're, uh, we're in our last 15 minutes or so here. Can we talk a little bit about health and diet? These are two very big you, things. Yeah, you, you've overcome electric hypersensitivity, which is amazing. Yeah. So we'd love to know how you do it. Well, how I do it, yeah. So... Um, well, um, the first thing is, is rigorous EMF protection. That's what I call it. And so that really means what um, I've been talking about. So the first thing is education, is understanding. And that's the hard part is that most people don't take the time to understand this. So first thing is get wise on this. You know, don't take my word for it. Just go and, you know, do some, re if you don't believe me, do some research, read the Buy Initiative report. Um, there's lots of great sources of, of information on this uh, and the, 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 the facts are out there. So, the first, yeah, so get some get wise on this, get educated. And then rigorous EMF protection. What does that mean? Well, it means just dealing with those four categories of EMFs that I've just spoke about. Let's say electric fields, magnetic fields, dirty electricity and radio frequency radiation. And the way to do that is to 
by the meters which will enable you to have the information to understand exactly what's going on and i'm not saying go out today and buy all these meters but i'm saying that you need to put in place a strategy to do that and you start with whatever appears to be the most uh, the biggest concern the biggest problem so that might be in your case sharon then a really good the next step is a good radio frequency radiation meter because you've got that uh, fire station antenna down the street and the smart meters and things so to see what's going on there and really to uh, and then to go down and to have the meters which are able to uh, measure these devices uh, to the best of your ability um, um, and the best of your financial means is to because it's super important having the right meters. Um, and so that's the first thing is and what we're aiming for is ALAR as low as reasonably possible. OK, there's no safe, not safe. Nobody knows what safe is. Nobody. No scientist, nobody, no doctor, nobody. Nobody in the world will say it because we are these hugely subtle energy beings. We're very, we're very sensitive energy beings. Uh, That's and right. And safe for one person is not necessarily it. safe for another. Well, yeah. But, and the other thing is, it's it's not because you <clears throat> you feel these energies that it's necessarily worse than somebody who doesn't feel it. It's just because you feel it. Actually, feeling it was rather a good thing because you can do something about it. It's when you don't feel it, and then boom, you get cancer, you get Parkinson's, you get Alzheimer's or whatever. And I'm not saying it's because you do feel it that you won't, but the thing is, when you do feel it, then then it's that's a wake-up call to take action. So take that's action. That's right. That's right. Um, You're put that, in a better position yeah. to do something about it. And it's so unfortunate and tragic that it it literally does take a personal experience like that for most people to it often get up, does. Get up off the couch and actually do something about it. Right. Right. It's not because, you know, if if anybody's listening to that today to this and they're going to do something about it, it's not because this is the first time they've heard about this. It's because they're already experiencing the effects of EMFs in their life. That's when they begin to take action. And maybe some of what I've said today and some of what we've talked about will have an effect on them. But yeah, to answer the question of how I got better, which which I'd like to just address briefly, um, is, well, it's, it's really, so the first thing is a rigorous EMF protection. Um, and then the second thing is, um, is the, um, the, 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 all every, is everything else basically. Um, and that when I say everything else, I mean everything else. So it's a holistic approach to health. It's a holistic approach to health with EMFs as the cornerstone because EMFs are super important because, as I said before, because we are uh, energetic beings, because our cells are communicating electromagnetically. And that's why EMFs need to be put um, really at the heart of what you're doing. And so once you've gone beyond that and that's where i was about two years about 2004 2005 and then it's well hell why am i still getting these symptoms that you know i've done all everything i needed to do and yet i'm still getting symptoms and then the next thing to do that i did was the nutrition I looked at my nutrition and i mean hey i'm living in france you know and we, we we eat very healthy we already ate healthy and it's like local farmers market and and then we move towards organic and and, and, and local food and and you know so um, whole organic um natural foods that's the key um where i'm sort of i've got a leading so nutrition obviously everybody's got a, a view on this so it's it's but i've got a leaning towards western a price and I tend to think that um, I'm always very much going back to basics. And it's often I find that it's stuff we've forgotten and um, which we knew and yet we've forgotten. Um, and, 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 so, and, and so that's but, yeah, it's a long it's a big topic, uh, nutrition. But what I will say is cleansing and detox, hugely important. And I had some major breakthroughs with that. Um, notably, Dr. Holder Clark protocol for parasite cleanse and liver cleanse. Yep. Excellent. I, lot, yeah. Yeah. I've done lots and lots of detoxes and continue to do that. And I'm regular, regularly detoxing because now I understand how important that is. The other thing is you need, so it's a very energy based approach. And the other thing which I do is um, I muscle test and I douse. Um, so I'm very connected to, um, well, I'm very connected to nature. Um, I'm very connected to my inner self and to um, to this innate wisdom, which is in all of us and which is in the universe. And I'm very connected to that. 
And really my work after that was once I'd gone through all this and I, each time I thought, well, hey, yeah, that's it. I've cracked it. I've cracked it. I've cracked it. And then each time there'd be something else which I would have to discover. And this is why it yes. became a spiritual journey, because the, what I really discovered was, well, the universe is really not at all like we think it is, because we think we're just kind of these um, physical, we just see these physical beings, but the physical part is just kind of the tip of the iceberg and it's everything underneath which is, and there's lots of different ways of looking at this, but uh, certainly um, an easy way of looking and thinking about it is uh, your emotion, your emotional, mental and spiritual bodies. And that's a simple, and there's lots of different models on this. But the important thing to understand is um, that we, it's not, we are not just these physical beings. And and so, and then, and then what do you, what do you do about it? That's all fine and good. But then what do you do about it in a practical sense what do you do um, to get better? And what you do to get better, that becomes a journey. And been, the beginning of that journey is really one of um, a certain state of acceptance with who you are and what's happening. And then um, from that into a certain surrender um, to what's happening to you. Because again, because uh, you, you, you said to me about fighting the you know cell phone companies and whatnot and the utilities and so on. And again, that honestly, I believe is not the way to go. And you, you can do good in this world without fighting and leading by example um, yes. and being, you know, walking the talk because it's so easy to give advice to others. But if you're not doing it yourself, that's really what counts. And so. I have uh, developed a very um, spiritual approach to life. And it wasn't, I didn't set out to do that. It just, it's because I'm a very pragmatic person. So I'm a, a, a bean counter, a number cruncher, you know, an accountant. And um, I wasn't interested in this at all. It would, it, but it just became just, just blatantly obvious. That this was the way to go. And I consulted many, many people. And obviously, once I got through kind of the conventional approach of the doctors and, you know, the, the, the different um, specialists, then I turned to uh, alternative uh, medicine and um, different uh, chiropractors, um, osteopaths, um, uh, kinesiologists, um, lots of different um, healers. Um, and uh, yeah, I began to understand really what was going on and understand myself better. And, and again, connecting to this in a wisdom and the, 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 the healer within and, and really one of the most important tools I, I developed, uh, for dealing with, with this and, 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 and becoming and changing and becoming this person, which I now am and not the person in, in 2002 is, is, uh, meditation, um, is meditation and, and, and visualization. And I do a lot of work with that uh, every day. And I spend a long, um, a good, um, every morning I do that. And really, um, it started out, so meditating, connecting with me. And it started into a work of, of, of so initially helping myself. And now it's about helping other people. And, and that's what I do through my meditation, um, is I work on that. And I'm not, I'm not particularly talking about um, electrically sensitive, in inverted commas. I'm talking about what's going on on the planet, you know, about what's yeah. going on in nature. I'm talking about what's going on in these, uh, you know, in, in Syria, in, um, in, in these hotspots in Iraq and in these different places and what we see in the news and working with that and, and you know, helping, um, you know, the, the people that need the help. Um, in those places. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Lloyd. This has been an absolutely amazing interview. Uh, we've learned so much and we got to have you back again sometime for sure. But uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. You've brought a lot of wisdom to these, a lot of light to these issues. Um, and your website, one more time, please. Okay. Um, last plug. Yep. So electricsense.com or one word, electric sense as in common sense. And yeah, lots of information there on EMFs, a little bit uh, so um, on the dangers, but very solution oriented and mainly talking about the practical side, uh, very sort of hands on down to earth practical stuff. And then I also do uh, coaching with people uh, where I talk about the kind of stuff that just took. Thank you so much, Lloyd. It was such an inspiration listening to you today. 
Please check out electricsense.com to learn more about EMFs and dirty electricity and things you can do. And visit our website, thekembo.com. And we also hope to see you at the 5D event, April 7th through 10th in Los Angeles at LAX Holiday Inn. Thanks again, Lloyd. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Gabe. It's my pleasure. Many thanks for the invitation. You're welcome. And thank you. This is the Human Frequency on American Freedom Radio. Thanks for listening, and please visit with us again next week. Thank you.